I'm here with Chris Goslin, who is 12 and 2 after 14 rounds, playing an interesting take on a doomsday list. So we're gonna have Chris talk a little bit about the list. Uh, tell us where this deck came from. Uh, well, I, I like playing with big creatures, so that was the first part, and it's basically just uh, you know a combo deck, but it has two ways to resolve Emrakul. And it's a homebrew that I came up with myself, although a lot of other people are playing Doomsday Emrakul as well, I notice. And so you have three basic uh, groups of cards. You've got the combo cards, you've got Show and Tell to put Emrakul out, and you've got Doomsday to put Emrakul out. I'll go through a Doomsday stack in a minute. And then you've got your library manipulation to get the combo, and a lot of disruption, force of will, spell pierces, stifles, and thought seizes. Uh, because you're really only looking to resolve one spell in the game. If you resolve one of these spells, mm -hmm. you typically win. Um, and then there are a whole bunch of one-ofs, because when you make your Doomsday Pile, there are different things you need depending on what the matchup is. So a typical Doomsday Pile might be um, a Brainstorm, followed by a Shell Dock Isle, followed by the Cloud of Fairies, the Emrakul, and the Solitary Confinement. And you can do this if you have three mana out already. The amount of mana you have changes what goes in the pile, maybe a Lotus Petal, but you would draw the Brainstorm, and then draw uh, these three off the Brainstorm, put the Emrakul and one other card back, play the Shell Duck Isle and put the Emrakul from your library under it, play the Cloud of Fairies, untap the, untap the Shell Duck Isle in a land, and then cast the Emrakul immediately, and you always have two cards left in your library at the end because of the Brainstorm. Um, so you take another turn, you draw one, Emrakul swings and annihilates, and then you drop the Solitary Confinement. And there's really no reprisal, there's not a lot they can do. They can't target you, they can't damage you, they have no permanence usually. Um, and then you just ride it out from there. Uh, the, only, the reason the Shared Fate is there, it's another way that I can't deck myself. And sometimes you can just throw this out there. They, the other player can't win with my deck. Uh, so as funny as it is, I, I can let them draw my whole deck all day long because the show and tell doesn't work because Emrakul is under the Shared Fate and not in their hand. And there's no other win condition here. They're not going to be able to hard cast Emrakul. I don't have enough lands. Uh, so that's the gist of it. So where... One of the more interesting aspects of this deck is, is the Cloud of Fairy Shell Dock Isle. Where did that come from? Well, if you just throw the Shell Dock Isle out there, you have to wait two turns, especially after Doomsday, at half-life before you can put the Emrakul out, and that's too slow. So I was looking for ways to uh, get the Shell Duck Isle online earlier, and a, something like a Twiddle effect just didn't seem worth it, but this gives you a blocker. Uh, you can cycle him early in the game, and he comes back and because Doomsday shuffles the graveyard back. So it's just a perfect card for the situation, and I have a snap on the sideboard that does the same thing, and can get rid of an extra permanent or bounce a meddling mage or something. I see, I see. All right, so tell me, let's, let's walk through the sideboard then. Well, uh, this is basically just Icarid, uh, because I hate Icarid, and they're a little too fast for me. Uh, the Solitaries and the Hydro Blast are for Goblins and Aggro. Uh, the Armageddon was for the 40 land uh, deck, which I haven't played yet. The Form of the Dragon is for Goblins. And I generally bring the Show and Tell in every game, so that, that should have probably been in the main deck. Um, and the Dark Ritual is just when you want to be a little faster. Okay. What other changes would you make to the main deck, having played it? Uh, well, there needs to be a fourth thought seize somewhere, I think. I don't know where it's going to go yet. Uh, another a friend of mine is playing the exact same list, and he day two with it as well. And he, he wanted a fourth thought seize as well. That was really the, the only change we saw. Okay. Now, what are, what are some of your good matchups? Uh, Zoo, I typically beat 2-0. Um, and I've basically just been playing countertop all day long. Uh, I think I've played him five times. And uh, it's tough, it's tricky, but only having to resolve one spell in that matchup is huge. So, uh, Zoo and most aggro decks that can't deal with solitary confinement are the best matchups. Okay, and what are some of your worst matchups? Uh, Merfolk, I would say. Uh, any, any creature deck that can also counter is tough. Okay. Alright, now, when, since it's a combo deck, what kind of hands are you looking for when you, uh, when you pull your initial seven? Uh, the deck doesn't require a lot of mana. I actually don't mulligan very often because almost any combination of this stuff, as long as you've got one land or two, is good because you're either going to find the cards you need or you already have the combo. I mean, you turn two, you can just ritual into a doomsday and you're going to draw what you want. So there aren't a lot of bad hands. Maybe some combination of the, the random one-ofs here wouldn't okay. be good. Um, all right. 
So what's, uh, what's the quickest kill you've had on the day? I, uh, I have done a turn to Emrakul um, from both a Doomsday and a Show and Tell, but that obviously doesn't kill them immediately. It takes, mm -hmm. takes a couple turns after that. I'm not really in a rush. I usually try to go off turn three, uh, so I haven't had any really quick kills. All right, anything else? No, that's about it. All right, thank hey, you. Thanks a lot. Yeah.